Shvi'i Shel Pesach The events that are unfolding before our eyes The war in Gaza Many people have a question how to view it according to the perspective of the Torah On the one hand, the Jewish people were attacked We have to defend ourselves, we have to ensure our security But it came at a, a cost of human life How do we view that? Are we supposed to rejoice in our victory? Are, are we supposed to feel happiness in our triumph? Are we supposed to commiserate in any way and be sensitive to human loss? What is the attitude, what is the perspective according to the Torah? So, we are headed towards Shvi Shel Pesach, which I think is the most appropriate prism to view the events that are unfolding before our eyes. You know, we find this dichotomy. The Jewish people after they were in Egypt for 210 years and they were brutalized, they saw with their own eyes the vengeance and the revenge against their tormentors, against Mitzrayim. And the reaction of the Jewish people was they sang a magnificent shira, shira sayam az yashir. And on the other hand, the heavenly angels, Bikshu Malach Yashar Zulamar Shira, the angels wanted to sing Shira, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu responded to them, Masse Yodai Tovim Vayam Atam Oymim Shira, my handiwork drowns in the sea and you want to sing Shira. In fact, the Taz brings this as the reason why we don't say Halo Sholem on the seventh day of Pesach. So the angels want to sing Shira, they're not allowed to, but the Jewish people sang Shira. What's the difference between the Jews who sang Shira and the heavenly angels? So, Harav Shimon Schwab, this is brought in his Sefer Iyun Tefillah on page Kuf Peches on the Shira Sayam, as well in his Sefer Mayon Beis HaShayeva on Parshas B'Shalach, Perak Yudalet Pasuk Chaf. He says something astounding in the Iyun Tefillah. He says he heard this when he was in Yeshiva. He heard this from an individual, and he does. he's not sure if he said it on his own or he said in the name of a Gavra Rabbah, but... In his commentary to the Chumash, he says this is a Dover Mestaber. We know there's an idea that a Malach cannot do two Shlichuyos, two missions. And yet, we don't find such a thing by a human being. Why is that? Why can a Malach not do two missions? And what's the deeper meaning of this idea that an angel cannot perform two missions at the same time? Like an angel can't multitask, but a human being can. Rabbi Schwab says, you know, the Navi describes the Malach V'raglam Regal Yeshara. Its leg is a straight leg, but this has a deeper meaning as well. A Malach can only look at something from one perspective. An angel is not created in the image of Hashem. Therefore, a Malach only has one perspective at looking at a situation. When God takes revenge against the wicked, there are simultaneously two things that are happening. On the one hand, Bi'ibad Rasham Rina. There's a concept when the wicked are destroyed, there's great song in heaven. Because when the wicked receive their recompense and their punishment, it sanctifies the name of Hashem. It elevates Hashem's name. When there's justice, when justice is meted out in this world, it elevates the name of Hashem. And that requires song. And in fact, the Jewish people did sing. But on the other hand, people are suffering. So... Do we also need to empathize? Should we sympathize? Should we be sensitive to human suffering? These two attitudes are contradictory. But they're only contradictory for an angel because an angel can only see things from one vantage point. And if an angel would look at the situation and sing in exaltation that the wicked are being destroyed, that would mean they cannot also see and sympathize and empathize with human suffering. So therefore Hashem says, you're not able to sing. You, if you're going to sing over the downfall of the wicked, then you'll be completely callous and desensitized to human suffering. So you can't sing. But man was created in the image of Hashem. Man has the sophistication and is able to have the dichotomy to be able to say, yes, on the one hand, on the one hand, we need to sing because we see the downfall of the wicked and Be'ibad Rosham Rina. And at the same time, we can also have a certain pain in our hearts for human suffering. It doesn't mean it doesn't have to be done. It doesn't mean that we do anything less. But, at the, but the reality is when human, people, when human beings suffer, 
We're not callous. We're not insensitive. We still maintain a semblance of a feeling of humanity and sympathy for what they're going through. Human being has that sophistication. An angel doesn't. That's why the angels were not allowed to sing, but mankind is able to sing. Many people wonder, so what should the attitude be toward the, uh, the war that's taking place in Gaza? Many people's lives were taken uh, in order for the Jewish people to maintain our security. And the answer is, we exult and we rejoice in triumph. But at the same time, we don't desensitize ourselves to human suffering. And for us, it's not a contradiction. We have that sophistication. Of course, brother rather than other. Of course, we exult in the triumph of our own brothers. But at the same time, we still do not lose sensitivity for those who are suffering, even if they cause suffering to us. Case in point, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. The altar of Slabarka taught, and this is quoted in the Haggadah Shal Pesach, in Tali Oyrois, page Reish Nun Beis. What's the reason why the Minhag is? That when we recite the Makois that were administered to the Mitzrayim, we pour out a little bit of Yayin, either we use our finger or we pour the cup. Why are we pouring out a little bit? Because even though Kais Yeshua Sessa, for the most part, in general, we rejoice and we raise our cup, the cup of salvation, and we sing Hallel Tashem, and it's a night of great joy. But at the same time, we just we take just a little bit of wine out of our cup to indicate that we feel to some extent the human suffering of people who are wicked and they cause us harm and they cause us suffering. But we will never lose our feeling of sensitivity and we will never completely, we will never lose our humanity. No matter who's suffering, even if it's people who are our persecutors and tormentors. So I think that's a good prism and a good paradigm of how to approach what we hear about, what we see. Kais Yeshua Sessa, we raise up the cup of triumph and victory and salvation and at the same time we pour out just a bit of wine to recognize that when people suffer it, we're not callous to it and the events of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and the seventh day of Pesach give us the proper prism and the proper perspective of how to view world events uh, that are unfolding before our eyes wishing everyone a Chag Kasher Vesameach